Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather is considered one of the greatest crime pictures ever made. The movie, starring Marlon Brando, Al Pacino, Robert Duvall and James Caan, was nominated for 11 Oscars, winning 3. Here are 40 things you probably didn't know about the film. Number 1. Marlon Brando did not memorise most of his lines and instead read them off cue cards that were placed around the set or on actors' bodies, as shown here. Number 2. There was a ferocious amount of mooning on set, actors showing their bare asses, which is thought to have been initiated by James Caan and Robert Duvall in order to break tension. Caan said in an interview, My best moon was on 2nd Avenue. Bob Duvall and I were in one car and Brando was in another, so we drove up beside him and I pulled down my pants and stuck my ass out of the window. Brando fell down in the car with laughter. Al Pacino also got involved, saying, in a scene where I sit behind a desk, Wardrobe made a big fuss about getting me into a shirt with a smaller collar, so while everyone was looking at the shirt, I took off my pants. When I came out from behind the desk, I got a laugh, even though we had to do the scene over. It got so bad that Richard Bright, who played Al Neri, said that it got to a point where every time you turned open a door, you expected to see someone's behind on the other side. The ultimate moon came when Brando and Duvall mooned 400 cast and crew members during filming of the wedding scene. Marlon Brando was crowned with a heavyweight style leather belt with the title Moon Champion. Number 3. According to Francis Ford Coppola, due to the movie's length, an intermission was planned which would have taken place immediately after Michael murders Solotso and McCluskey. This is why operatic music begins to play when Michael leaves the restaurant and why a newspaper montage ensues which would have been the first scene after the intermission. Number 4. The studio executives did not feel Don Corleone's death scene was necessary, seeing as though his funeral would let audiences know he was dead. Coppola was adamant that the scene be included, so he took three cameras and Marlon Brando and shot the scene at a private residence with Brando ablibing his lines. Number 5. Fabrizio, Michael's treacherous bodyguard who plants the bomb that kills Michael's wife Apollina, actually has revenge enacted on him by Michael. In a scene that was shot, Michael finds Fabrizio at a pizza parlour the latter opens in America, and he's blown away by Michael. The scene was ultimately cut, and various reasons have been cited, such as there being so much fake blood used that the scene looked ridiculous. Fabrizio's death was filmed again for The Godfather Part 2, this time the traitor being blown up in a car bomb as a form of poetic justice. This scene was also cut from the theatrical version of the film, but can be found online. Number 6. According to Richard S. Castellano, he defended cinematographer Gordon Willis during a disagreement between Willis and Francis Ford Coppola, and Coppola got his revenge by making Castellano do 20 takes of the shot of Clemenza walking up four flights of stairs. Number 7. During rehearsals, a fake horse's head was used for the scene where Jack Waltz wakes up to find his prized horse's decapitated head in his bed. However, for the actual film shot, a real horse's head was used. John Marley, who played Waltz, said his screaming was real and not acting, and he was not told a real horse head was going to be used. Animal rights activists protested this scene, and Francis Ford Coppola has commented on this, saying, there were many people killed in that movie, but everyone worries about the horse. It was the same on the set. When the head arrived, it upset many crew members who are animal lovers, who like little doggies. What they don't know is that we got the head from a pet food manufacturer who slaughters 200 horses a day just to feed those little doggies. Number 8. Sonny's death scene was shot in one take with numerous cameras positioned at different places. This was due to the fact that Khan's body was taped with 149 scripts and it would take too long to repeat the shot. The scene cost more than $100,000 to set up. Number 9. Marlon Brando, a known prankster, put weights under his body for the scene where he is carried upstairs on his bed. Number 10. Many of the ideas from the film were borrowed from real-life mob stories, in particular gangster Crazy Joe Gallo. Terms like hitting the mattresses and sleeping with the fishes came from the life of Gallo, the latter coming from an incident where a Gallo associate was killed on a fishing trip and the Gallo brothers were sent a fish wrapped in a box. Sonny, the hothead, is thought to be modelled on Crazy Joe Gallo, the thoughtful and intelligent Michael on Larry Gallo and the dimwit Fredo on Michael Gallo. Joe Gallo is reportedly thought to have considered suing the filmmakers and book author Maria Puzo after watching the movie, 
though this never ended up happening as Gala was murdered around a month after the film's release. Number 11. Francis Ford Coppola has said that the film's climax, with the baptism scene intercut with the murders, did not really work until editor Peter Zinner added the organ soundtrack. Number 12. The famous line, leave the gun, take the cannoli, was improvised by Richard Castellano. Number 13. Lenny Montana, who played Luca Brasi, was so nervous about working with Marlon Brando that he flubbed some of his lines. Francis Ford Coppola liked the genuineness of it and then filmed a scene of Brasi practicing his speech, which had the effect of highlighting the respect and fear Don Corleone commands. Number 14. The studio was not convinced of Al Pacino's casting. Coppola fought to keep him, and Pacino felt that he could be fired at any moment. In fact, according to one interview, Pacino says that he was going to be fired midway through filming, with the studio execs only having seen early shots of Michael at the wedding, exclaiming, when is he going to do something? It was only until Michael shoots Solotso that they changed their minds about Pacino. Number 15. At the meeting in the restaurant between Michael and Solotso, you don't see subtitles for Solotso's dialogue in Sicilian because the actor was speaking so fast. What he said was, I am sorry. What happened to your father was business. I have much respect for your father, but your father, his thinking is old-fashioned. You must understand why I had to do that. Now let's work through where we go from here. And when Michael returns from the bathroom, he continues with his monologue. Everything all right? I respect myself, understand, and cannot allow another man to hold me back. What happened was unavoidable. I had the unspoken support of the other family dons. If your father were in better health, without his eldest son running things, no disrespect intended, we wouldn't be having this nonsense. We will stop fighting until your father is well and can resume bargaining. No vengeance will be taken. We will have peace. But your family should interfere no longer. Number 16. If only upfront salaries are taken into consideration, Richard S. Castellano, who played Peter Clemenza, was the highest paid actor in the film. Number 17. James Kahn and Gianni Russo did not get along during filming, and during the famous scene where Sonny beats up Carlo in the street, Kahn broke two of Russo's ribs and chipped his elbow. Number 18. Director Francis Ford Coppola and the studio clashed heavily, with Coppola coming very close to losing his job. Reasons cited included his inability to stay on schedule, unnecessary expenses and casting decisions the studio did not like. Funnily enough, the film came in under budget and was completely ahead of schedule. However, Coppola had such a bad experience he refused to direct the second film, instead suggesting Martin Scorsese, and only signed on after Paramount Pictures offered him an abundance of money and clauses which made the shoot easier for him. Number 19. Marlon Brando stuffed his cheeks with cotton wool for his audition because he wanted Don Corleone to look like a bulldog. For the actual film, he wore a mouthpiece made by a dentist. And this is the actual mouthpiece Brando used in the film. Number 20. Reportedly, the assassination attempt on Don Corleone had to be reshot numerous times, as a crowd of onlookers gasped when Marlon Brando would fall and then cheer wildly and loudly at his performance. When it was done, Brando bowed to the cheering crowd. Number 21. Michael's son Anthony is named Anthony because the three-year-old child actor Anthony Gennaris responded best when his real name was used during shooting. Number 22. The Godfather novel explains that the reason why Michael wipes his nose with a handkerchief is because McCluskey's punch did damage to Michael's sinuses. Number 23. The cat held by Brando in the opening scene was not in the script and instead a stray that was found on the filming lot. Reportedly, the cat's purring muffled some of Brando's dialogue, meaning his lines had to be looped. Number 24. Jack Nicholson turned down the role of Michael Corleone, feeling that the role should be played by an actor of Italian descent, and due to the fact that the script draft he was sent contained no scenes between him and Marlon Brando. Number 25. Marlon Brando rejected his Oscar for Best Actor for the film, instead sending Sachin Littlefeather to represent him at the Academy Awards ceremony and give a speech about the industry's mistreatment of Native Americans. Number 26. The production of the film had heavy, real-life mob presence, with actors such as Al Martino and Lenny Montana being connected to crime families. A studio executive was even summoned to a meeting by Colombo family boss Joe Colombo, 
where the gangster made several demands, such as the word mafia being removed from the script. I have a more detailed 10 minute video on this which you can check out. Number 27. Each of the wedding guests who asks for a favour from Don Corleone on his daughter's wedding day is asked to return it, in a manner of speaking. Nazarene the baker asks for help arranging his son Enzio's stay in America, and Enzio himself arrives at the hospital later to visit the Don and helps Michael to ward off would-be assassins. Johnny Fontaine, after being given a film role that revives his career, agrees to appear at Michael's casinos towards the end of the film, and Bonacera, who sought revenge after the beating of his daughter, is called upon by Don Vito to prepare Sonny's body for his funeral. Number 28. Frank Sinatra was furious at the character of Johnny Fontaine, as it was supposedly based on him. When he met Maria Puzo at a restaurant, he screamed vulgar terms and threats at him. Puzo denies the character was based on Sinatra. Number 29. At Connie's wedding, Sonny copulates with the maid of honour, Lucy Mancini, played by Gian Linero. The same actress is seen again briefly during a celebration in The Godfather Part 3, and Vincent, Michael's nephew, who eventually becomes the Don of the Corleone family, is her bastard son. Number 30. The movie is called Mario Puzo's The Godfather at Francis Ford Coppola's insistence, who felt his and Puzo's screenplay was almost completely faithful to Puzo's original novel. Number 31. In the 2015 documentary Listen to Me Marlon, Brando's archival tapes tell of times when, as a young boy, his mother would take her teeth out and make faces to make Marlon laugh, very similar to what Brando does just before he dies in the film. Number 32. Marlon Brando was against having Gianni Russo in the film as he hadn't acted before. This made Russo furious and he marched to Brando to threaten him. However, during the verbal abuse, Brando thought Russo was acting, and it convinced him that he would be good for the role. Number 33. The highly quoted phrase, bada bing, said by James Kahn, is something the actor heard from his acquaintance, the real-life mobster, Carmine Persico. Number 34. The part where James Kahn throws the FBI photographer's camera on the ground, and when he throws money at the man to make up for it, was improvised by the actor. Number 35. Marlon Brando slapping Johnny Fontaine was not in the script. Al Martino's reaction was genuine, with James Kahn saying Martino didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Number 36. Francis Ford Coppola initially did not want to direct the project, but was persuaded to do so as he was in debt to Warner Brothers. I have a very detailed video on this which you can check out. Number 37. Sergio Leone was approached to direct the film, but he turned it down, a decision he later regretted which spurred him on to make his own gangster movie years later, Once Upon a Time in America. Number 38. One of Mario Puzo's favourite lines from the book was, A lawyer with a briefcase can steal more than a hundred men with guns. And he was adamant that it be used in the film, but Marlon Brando felt it was too preachy, and it was removed. Number 39. Nina Rota's Oscar nomination for the score was removed as he reused the same theme from a previous film called Fortunella. He won the Oscar for The Godfather Part 2 even though the sequel uses the same love theme as the first film. Number 40. Marlon Brando and Robert De Niro are the only two actors to win separate Oscars for playing the exact same character as Don Vito Corleone. Heath Ledger and Joaquin Phoenix would later both win Oscars for playing two different versions of the same character in The Joker. So there you have it. For more videos, consider subscribing to the channel and thanks for watching.